Hi there and welcome to my Tech and Hacks channel. In this video I will show you how I build a powerful, cheap, economic and at least fancy looking power supply for my blunt Raspberry Pi cluster. I didn't want to have a single wall ward for each Raspberry. No, 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 no. I wanted a central power supply for five or even more Raspberries. So here comes our first password. Powerful! Googling around, the world says that I need to provide a maximum of 2 Ampere per Raspberry. So, multiplied by those 5 or more Raspberries, the power supply should do 10 or more Amps at 5 volt. My beloved Raspberries can handle a plus minus 5 tolerance on their 5 volt, which means the supply should deliver 4.75 to 5.25 volts. So this was another restriction. The next password is cheap. I found some industrial power supplies which fit these requirements and they were not even expensive. But thinking of our environment and the old computers which rot in my lab, I checked those old computer supplies. And hey, those guys do exactly what I need. Multiple voltages, 3.3, 5 and 12 volt. And the 5 volt with up to 30 amps. Woohoo! My next goal, economic. So I tested out some of those old PC supplies and found a very nice one which just needed 16 watt including a very silent running fan and needed 0 watt when switched off but still connected. Others took more and couldn't be completely switched off. Checking the voltage output showed 5.24 volt so it fitted within the plus minus 5 tolerance of the Raspberries. Yeah, I found my babe. Fancy looking. Hmm, well, I think I'll come back to this later. Holding the baby in my hand, I started to prepare it for my needs. But first, watch out! It's dangerous to work with an open power supply. There are some high voltage capacitors which could really harm you. So, better know what you do. If you look at such a PC power supply, there are a lot of cables coming out of it. Some for the different voltages and some for controlling the supply. In my case, it's an old ATX supply which usually shuts down when you switch it on and there's no power consumption. So my first goal was to get rid of all those unnecessary cables and keep the supply running even if there's no consumption. Calculating an output of 20 amps and 5 amps per square millimeter cable diameter, I would need 4 cables, the red ones, for 5 volt power and 5 cables, the black ones, for ground. To keep the supply running without any consumption, I had to bridge the power on connector, which is usually located on pin 4 on the big 20 pin connector. In my case, I had to bridge the green cable to ground, and that's all. I dragged this green cable back to the supply, shortened it, and soldered it together with the fifth ground cable. All other cables were desoldered. Here were the three volt cables. And here were the 12 volt ones. Only the 4 red 5 volts and the 4 black ground cables were left. The result was a pure 5 volt output power supply which, because of the bridge, didn't shut down. Perfect! Here's the rest, <laughs> what a mess! And as you can see, it took me 2 beer so far. Ah, as promised, here's one part of the fancy look. I extracted everything out of the case, eliminated all the stickers and sprayed it fancy black silk matte. Oh my god, it became so beautiful. Don't you think so?
Now, how should I connect the raspies? I choose to do it the traditional way, which means to connect them via usual type A USB to type B micro USB cable. So I thought the best way to do this is to directly connect the power supply to USB hub which is attached to it. I searched the internet for a nice and cheap one and found this beauty, available in white or black. It's a 7 port USB hub, each port has a small switch and a nice blue power LED. The size of it per fits perfectly to be mounted directly in the power supply. It is just so nice! Some days passed, then I held it in my hands, and yes, it was the right choice. I immediately opened it, cut the connector cable and checked the board for suitable connectors, where I could solder the power cables. I choose these locations for the 5 volt power and these ones for the ground connections. And here's our first test drive. Oh, special thanks for my little actress here. Then I mounted the hub case to the power supply with three screws. Watch out! Do not drill too deep and insulate the screws to avoid short circuits. Open a little gap in the hub cover so that all cables fit in nicely. Finally I soldered the shortened cables to the hub and assembled it. And ta-ta! Here it is, my black beauty! If everything is connected correctly, you will see some nice blue LED eyes sitting on the beautiful black power supply. And here you can see it in action, the supply powering my small raspberry cluster which I will describe in another video. So stay tuned and thumbs up please! That's all! More details on this and further projects on my blog. See the links below. Thanks for watching!